Let's go over 10 quick and easy time-saving hacks in Excel that you can literally start using today. First up, we have the clipboard, which surprisingly very few people know about. Over here, you can see that we have these orders. Let's suppose we want to copy some of these IDs. So I might select the second one with Ctrl C and just press Ctrl V to paste it. But if I want to select multiple like this one over here and this other one and maybe one down over here, I need to do that every single time. But instead, I can just use the clipboard by clicking on this button right here. You'll notice there's the clipboard. Let me clear everything for now. And the idea is that every time you press Ctrl C to copy, it's going to get stored here. But you can store more than one thing. So Ctrl C again to store the second value. Let's say this third one as well. And this final one in the bottom. So I have these four stored and now I can just go on any other cell and click on paste all. You'll notice how I get to paste all of them at once. Once you're done to reset everything, you just need to press on clear all and close out of that. And before we move on to the second hack, if you want to follow along, you can download this exact same Excel file in the video description to follow along. In number two here, we have the go to special feature. So let's take a look at it. Over here, you can see we have this long table. Let's suppose we're told that we need to get to cell number B210. We can either scroll down manually like that, or an easier way that you might think of is to press Ctrl G. And under go to, in the reference here, we want to type whatever cell we're interested. So we said B210. Click on OK. That's going to take you down there. That's a fairly standard way to do this, so let me show you a faster alternative. That's simply by going over to this top left hand side where it says B1 right now and just type B210 and it takes you directly down there or to whichever other cell you want to go to. Continuing to number 3 and here we have the pattern fill. And you probably already know that when you have a sequence of numbers like a 1 to 3, if you click on this button here to the side and drag it down, you'll notice that it follows a sequence. Same thing goes if I were to skip one, if I put a three here, then a five and so forth, then it's managed to detect that pattern as well. That said, not many people know about this other hack. So under custom over here, instead of just dragging down like we typically do, just right click and then drag down. You'll notice now that you get this pop up to the side and we can fill it not just with the next day, but rather with weekdays, filling the months, and even the years. So let's try the years here. You'll notice that we go to 2026, 2027, and so forth. So that gives you a lot more customization. Again, you just want to right-click and drag down to get that full pop-up. These first three hacks were pretty cool, but check out this navigation feature or table of contents. So suppose in this file, we have a lot of different tabs, as you can see down over here. To navigate across them, it would be nice to have some kind of a table of contents to the side. We can add that by going over to view and clicking on navigation. That's going to show all of these options over here to the side. And the idea is that they're hyperlinked. So I can click on number six, takes me there, or go back to number one. And that takes me to sheet one. I can even rename them from here by right clicking and rename, or even selecting specific parts inside of it like I've selected this table. Before we continue on to number five, if you want to learn in-demand data skills, check out our data analyst program. It consists of four individual courses and over 300 lessons designed to level up your data analysis skills. First, in Excel, you learn best practices for formatting, formulas, and charts, and you'll apply your skills in real-life case studies from data cleaning to building a dynamic financial model. Then in Power BI, you'll dive into data visualization and creating interactive dashboards to extract maximum insights from your data. Thirdly, in SQL, you'll work with larger databases, writing SQL queries, and even connecting databases with applications like Excel and Power BI. Finally, in VBA and macros, you learn to automate tasks like generating pivot tables, profit and loss reports, and much more. So join our data analyst program now using the link in the description below to gain the skills you need to thrive in today's data-driven world. 
And number five, we have dynamic titles. And this is particularly useful for financial modeling. You can see over here that we have a very simple model where there's the company name and some information about the company down below over here. And the idea is that by having a dynamic title, if I change the company name from Apple to let's say PepsiCo, you'll notice that all of the headers change to PepsiCo. And this is great because it saves you time and it also saves you the embarrassment of forgetting to change the name of a certain header. To do this, it's actually surprisingly easy. Let me just start it from scratch here. I will go ahead and type equals, select the company name from the header above. Then I'm gonna add an ampersand and in quotations, I'm going to put investment, let's say summary or something or whatever it is that your header represents. You'll notice though that right now I have no space. I just need to add a space here right after the first quotation and hit enter. So you can see what it's doing. It's just gonna take whatever is in the cell and then you can add whatever title you want after that. So now I can change this back to Apple and you'll notice how all of these headers update as well. Later we'll cover section breakdowns, custom lists and much more. But first let's take a look at totals and subtotals. In this table over here, let's suppose that we want to know for each of these continents, the sum of revenue. For that, you might think of using a formula like a sum ifs, where the sum range is all of our revenues, comma, the criteria range is all of these continents, comma, and we want them when they're equals to Europe. So in this case, the criteria number one is in quotations, just Europe, and close the parenthesis and hit enter. That's the number for Europe, and I will need to replicate this for all of the other continents. That's a bit of a tedious method. There's actually a better way. For that, we'll go over to the continent and we'll first sort it. So we're gonna go over to the home tab and all the way to the right, there's the sort and filter. Let's go for A to Z. So now that we have the continents together, all of Africa, then Asia, Europe, etc., we can go over to data. And from here, we're gonna click on subtotal. We're happy for each of these continents to have the breakdown. You can also not pick the sum or maybe the average by each continent or whatever it may be that you need. I'm just gonna go for the sum here and just click on OK. Now you'll notice that we get this full breakdown where I have for Africa, the Africa total, Asia total, Europe, and the grand total as well. And we also get all of these breakdowns. So if I press on this too, You'll notice how it collapses all of the actual figures. Three expands it fully. And number one just gives me the grand total. So that's a super easy way to summarize your data. There's a ton of other awesome hacks like this in Excel. So hit that like and let me know down in the comments if you want a part two. But we're not quite done here. So let's go over automatic drop downs in number seven. So over here, you can see we have all of these orders that we need to assign to a specific manager. And for this, we can go one by one and type them in, or the alternative method is to type alt equals. That's a shortcut for it. And we get the suggestions for all of the names available. So I can just hit enter on this one, alt equals again, and hit enter on the next one. In this case, we only have about four different names. But in this other table to the side, you can see that I have a lot more employees that I need to assign this revenue figure to. I can just hit the alt equals again. And this time you can see that we get a scroll bar. And as I move my arrow, it's able to move up and down as well. Moving to number eight, and here we have descriptive statistics. So let's take a look over here. And you'll notice that we have all of these revenue values. And suppose we want to find the summary of these values. So you might think it would make sense to see the average of these revenue figures. Also finding something like count of occurrences would come handy. Maybe even the maximum would be useful for us to know. And what about the median? Well, maybe we should add the median too. And there's actually a lot of formulas that we need to keep in mind. That's where descriptive statistics comes handy. For this, you just need to go over to the data tab and click on data analysis all the way to the right. From here, we're going to look for descriptive statistics, click on OK, and the input range is all of our revenue figures. So I'll select those with Control Shift down all the way to the bottom there. 
and then we want the summary statistics. And where do we want them as the output? Maybe we can just put it over here to the side. Let me select that area right here. And then I'm just going to click on OK. I can delete all of this part because I don't quite need it. And you'll notice that we get a much deeper breakdown of the mean, standard error, and a ton of other data. If you don't really want all of it, you can always just delete it. And that's not really a problem either. Moving to number nine, and here we have the section breakdown. You're probably wondering what that means. So let's take a look. Over here, you can see that we have ABC store that's selling Apple products. And they have a breakdown for iPhone, for iPad, and for Mac. And the idea is that we want to be able to collapse this or expand this. And one way to do that is by going to data and clicking under group to this auto outline option. Click on that and you'll notice that it automatically detects what should be grouped where. So right now it's grouped the iPhone, the iPad and the Mac. And we can test if that's all correct by clicking on this number one and you'll see how it collapses it all properly. And number two to expand that. How awesome is that? And finally, let's go to number 10 before we move on to the bonus trick after. And here we have custom lists. So let's take a look over here. And you can see that we have the country managers and their names. Let's suppose that this is a list that we use very often. So it would be nice for us to be able to save it somehow. We can do that by heading over to file. All the way to the bottom, go under options. And here under advanced. We want to scroll all the way down to an area that's called edit custom lists. We'll click on that and you'll notice that we have some lists that are auto generated like the weekdays and we want to import a new one by clicking on the button and we'll select all of the country managers we have available. We'll click on that and just go to import. Then we can click on OK. OK again and now let's say I open up a new sheet and start typing the names of our managers just by typing Bill Smith. Now I can just drag down and you'll notice how all of the names are actually saved and Excel has been able to detect after the first one that I'm referring to all our saved country managers. You can imagine something like this super useful for remembering the names of all of your products or remembering the names of all of your offices. Awesome. Now, last but not least, we have the bonus feature, which is the collapsible ribbon. So right now you'll see that we can't see the full data set, but we don't really want to zoom out as the numbers are already quite small. What you can do instead is just press the F1 key to collapse that top area so you can see the full table down below. Again, that's the F1 key to bring it back up. You can also bring it back up simply by clicking on any of the areas like the home tab and you'll see how everything does show up again. Now another way to show or collapse this is simply by right clicking and clicking on collapse the ribbon or back to expanding it. If you thought these shortcuts were useful check out this video over here to save hours of time at work or check out our data analyst program over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.